Anyway, I'm Avital. I'm from Kaltura all the way in Tel Aviv. Uh, we specialize in everything video, so if that sounds like something that would interest you, find me later. That's the end of my pitch. <laughs> so, um, API owners, managers, facilitators, imagine that this is your API. It is restful, first and foremost, uh, responsive, predictable, uh, really quick. It has great errors in JSON, it, um, you know, deep filtering and searching, and uh, the best documentation ever written. This sounds awesome, right? All this is, ex and all this is exposed to your, uh, to your developer community, but as you start to add features, things get really complex and they end up having to write res string requests that look like this. Now, as a, I was a developer in my previous life and uh, this is like the bane of my existence. So the obvious answer becomes write a client library, right? But before you can do that, you need to ask yourself these questions. First of all, how exactly is your API going to be used? Do you have something like, you know, a simple data API, a one trick pony as we called it yesterday? something like the weather API that has one or two endpoints. Uh, maybe you don't even need a client library. Or do you relate more to an API that looks like this? It completes workflows and operations, you know, and, and your developers will keep accessing it as, as they add um, to their implementing applications. And if so, how often will your API be accessed? Is what you're offering good enough that you can afford an API that takes a while to learn and understand? So these are questions that Kaltura dealt with about 10 years ago when uh, we were building our API and I was doing my thing in high school. <laughs> uh, we knew that it was about to get really complex and that our data model would result in like really complicated nested paths. Um, and so what we did was, you know, in the process of making all these decisions about our API, we took each one of the objects floating around our system, uh, turned it into a service, and bundled all operations that could be done on that service as an action. And then each of those actions became endpoints that took in those nested objects as parameters. Um, another decision we made was we realized that firewalls don't support a lot of HTTP methods. Um, which would be a problem for the enterprises using our API. So we decided to only use uh, get and post methods and kind of overload everything on that. And then we took all of these decisions and hid all that complexity behind our client libraries. Um, I'll show you kind of an example. So this is our console. Um, this is the string request that we looked at earlier, the kind that was really hard to uh, right now, if I just add like a couple basic filters, you know, it starts to get kind of messy and you don't want to write that manually. Um, now, if we click over to our Python library, it looks slightly cleaner and easier to manage. Thing is that client libraries are not just about avoiding <coughs> string requests. What you need to remember, and this was mentioned over and over yesterday, is that your client libraries are your relationship with your developers. They call the shots, right? And you want to make them happy. And to do this, you need to understand the psychology behind marketing your API as a product. Because your users are developers, and if this wasn't clear enough yesterday, they are primed to like really specific methodologies and tools based on the environment and language of their choice. And so what kind of relationship do you want to have with them? You want to get as close as possible to what they like and understand, remembering that they, or we, um, are very opinionated about what they love and understand, which means that that one client library that you may have written in the language of your, of your, um, of your sorry, your API, maybe it was Python, it was probably Python, it's not enough. Because if they're doing something like what Kaltura developers are doing, which is like chunked file uploads, you want them to be able to do annoying things like file handling in the language of their choice. So you add Java, JavaScript because that's popular, everyone likes JavaScript, right? And I mean, no, but. <laughs> and uh, that's not enough, so then you add Java and PHP because those are important too. And uh, next thing you know, you're bragging about 11 client libraries, which is really fun and awesome until your next update. 
And if this is your team of developers, excuse me, if this is your team of developers, <laughs> about 40% of them will be spent making that little change to your 11 client libraries. So what's the solution for keeping your API libraries up to date? You can use an out-of-the-box tool like Swagger. Um, shout out to those of you representing. Uh, I won't talk a lot about this, but Swagger, because you know, we're going to hear from them later, but Swagger kind of helps you describe, define your API, uh, create an open API specification, um, which is a machine-readable specification that will describe and visualize and help you predict your API. And with all these kinds of tools, um, you kind of have this uh, visual. Uh, this is in YAML. This is JSON of your API endpoints and parameters and contact information, any other API info that might be important to you. Um, and then the next step is to go ahead and use a similar kind of tool to auto-generate your client libraries. Um, now, Swagger also has something like this. I think it's called CodeGen. Um, you can find all sorts of things like that. The problem with that is that code generators produce generic code. I think I spoke to a bunch of people at this on the patio yesterday. I said, someone could just come up with a way to make it less generic, but then it would still be generic. Um, and that's great if you have a basic CRUD API, but if you're handling, again, workflows and operations, um, that's not going to produce a good experience. And this is something that Kaltura dealt with when we were writing our client libraries. Uh, we realized that First of all, Swagger didn't exist or things like that, but it wouldn't have worked for us anyway because we were doing things like multi-requests and um, you know, filtered responses. Um, and, uh, and, and we realized it wouldn't be the right solution for us. So what we did was we created our own XML schema. It's packaged, here I'll show you. It's actually made up of all of our enums and objects, um, actions, filters, pages, pagers, here. It looks something like this. Um, so XML, it's pretty much similar to what we just saw over here, right? Um, but it's customized, and we wrote it for our own API. So here you see all the Kaltura enums. I'm gonna not scroll you through all of that. Can you, yeah, you can see that. Um, sorry. We've got our classes over here, if you've ever messed around with our API. So these are all the objects that I was describing and, and all the parameters that they take. And so on and so forth. We've got our services, our plugins. I don't know why this keeps opening. Um, and then after that, we created generators that would, cre that would parse that XML and create those, those client libraries in every language. And what this meant was that developers were getting an experience that was exactly what they were comfortable with. So in this diagram, for example, I don't know which way to point, but that star, the Kaltura logo, that's our server logic, right? Um, or our API. Now, right after that, we have the, what we call the introspection layer, and that's where the XML is generated from our code, complete with documentation and everything. And then right after that, we create our, our generators from the XML. And then they're passed to, uh, CI passes them to GitHub, where any tests that, I mean, like all libraries that pass the test, are then put in our public repo and relevant package generators for Java, Python, PHP. Now, what makes this extra cool is that we also then convert our um, XML to a Swagger spec and then pass that into LucyBot, which is a system that we sponsor. Um, takes us even a step further in automation. What it does is it creates our entire developer portal, complete with documentation, interactive documentation, our workflows, and our Try It Out console. And I'll show you that again. So you pretty much saw this. This is our Try It Out console. My favorite part is the interactive workflows. Um, especially because as I was saying, we have a lot of like operations that require a lot of steps and for first timers, even second timers, even still me, something like uploading video, which is the basic of Kaltura, requires five steps. And this workflow kind of walks you through every single step and 
You could choose the language of your choice and then copy paste that code. And didn't we say that developers love copying and pasting code? So LucyBot, again, takes our entire Swagger spec and creates this entire portal. The generators are written in PHP. And we have them for about 15 languages, um, including some like business processing model languages. Uh, and like I said, developers are getting an experience that they're comfortable with. Now what's cool about these generators is they're actually not that hard to write. And this is an open source project, so you can use it to create your own client generators. I'll show you a little bit about that. So you can find, um, I'll show you the links later, but here in our like knowledge center, you can find all information about creating these generators. Now, if you were to download the files, you'll end up with three files. This is the wrapper script. Uh, it runs the generator. It tests the libraries that you created, um, and it saves files to your disk. As you can see, it's written in PHP. You can, I mean, it's like super simple. You can write it yourself. Um, this is a, an abstract class that is extended by the, either by you or by us. I mean, it's the class that you would extend. Uh, this, this is where the helper functions are for, for generating that library. And the meat of the generator um, is right here. Uh, this is what you would change based on the language of your choice and your API and however you've spec'd out your API. Uh, you can imagine what generate does right, enums, you, you know, we saw those enums in that XML file, you take those and write them all to the library. Write object class, write service, write main class, project file if you need that. All of this is super simple. Now, as I mentioned, this is a open source, open source project. You can find me after if you want to talk about it. Email me, look it up. It's like pretty well documented. Uh, you'll also be able to see our client libraries in our repo. What you need to understand is that keeping your API, your client library is updated, it's almost like a side effect of, of doing everything else right. The first thing you need to know, as I said, is figure out your API, okay? How will it be used? How will it be accessed? Is there a lot of back and forth between your developers and your API? Maybe it's time for multi-requests. Maybe you don't even need a client library. You know, know all of these things. Know what your endpoints are that are going to be used the most and make them the easiest to use. Secondly, in the meantime, obviously we know this. Document, write great documentation, then write it again, but better. And make sure that you have standards in place so that no code gets pushed without, without documentation, without proper documentation, without updated documentation. And thirdly, I understood that this is not a common practice Create a definition of your API, whether it be from XML, an XML schema that you write yourself, an open API spec that you write yourself, or you're using out-of-the-box tools. Describe your API. It'll make it so much easier for you to you know, see what it's going to look like, predict any flaws, allow your internal team to make decisions and understand your API, allow your external team to understand your API, create documentation, interactive documentation, workflows, things like that. And most importantly, because you're auto-generating this, it's going to be using the latest and greatest version of your API. Because to reiterate, your client libraries are your relationship with your developers. And you don't want it to be the hard kind of relationship, you know? <laughs> the kind that they whine about, go looking for answers online about, how do I do this easier? You want this to be the kind of relationship that they brag about to their friends and talk about on social media, you know, that they, that they want to be part of. They want to be like a gift, you know? Um, you want this to be the kind of relationship that is clear in its expectations, you know, the magical stuff of fairy tales. <laughs> and in this fairy tale world, you and your developers all live happily ever after. Thank you.